Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to paint a dump truck. In the last video, I showed you how to paint an excavator for my nephew. When his dad saw the green diggy, he asked me to complete the set. So today we will work on the dump truck and in the next two videos we will work on two more construction vehicles. Let's start with a line drawing. First, I found a really good reference photo. I will have to make some modifications for the painting. In the line drawing, it is important that the proportions are about right. So I first mark out the center of my page, then I mark out the top and the bottom middle of the page. This will greatly help me to center the dump truck on my page and to get the proportions right. Since this is going to be part of a set, I will reuse the same paint that I used for the windows on the excavator. In order to paint glass, you typically mix in some blue pigment into your black watercolor, but I used green instead for the excavator. I did not want to introduce another color and I didn't use blue anywhere else with the excavator. I will be painting in my line drawing piece by piece. I first add some water to the page and let it sink in for a second. And then I will be adding the pigment. As you can see, I leave a little gap between the water and the pencil line and I will be closing that gap with the watercolor. This helps me to create a straight line. I finish up by dropping in some water and concentrated watercolor. They will push the previous layer of paint aside and that helps me to create a really great pattern. This method is called wet and wet, since I'm adding wet paint to a wet surface. I will be helping the paint to move and by dropping in some more pigment or water I will create wonderful patterns. I never paint in two areas that are touching at the same time. When the two wet areas touch it will create blooms and I will not be in full control over the blooms. The paint will seep from one area to the other and colors will be mixing. This can look really cool with loose florals, but not with this painting. The secret to this nursery painting is simply to make sure that all your edges are really crisp and sharp. And I will be cleaning them up once everything is dry. All you need for that is a damp brush and paper towel. I soften up the pigment and then I soak it up with a paper towel. Some pigments do stain the page more than others, so you might not be able to remove everything. Let's move on to painting in one of the larger areas. I wetten the entire area, but I leave a little gap towards the pencil lines and any previous layers of watercolor. I let the water sink in for a second and then I re-wetten the area again to make sure that it is evenly wet. This will prevent any hard edges, any brush strokes from forming. If they do appear, I can just go over it with a damp brush and brush them out. If I only see them later once everything is dry, I can go over it with a damp brush and soften up the pigment a bit to ease them out. When I close the gap between the pencil line and the water, there is quite a bit of pigment in my brush. So the watercolor will be darker in that area and bleed out into the wet area with only the water in it. This will create a gradient. In order to intensify the color gradient, I simply go over it again with more pigment in my brush. This only works as long as the area is still wet. If it is all ready to dry, you can simply go over it with a damp brush and add some more water to the area. And remember, we want the uneven look. We want all the blooms and we want all the patchiness. So just have fun with it. Using the wet and wet technique on a larger area can be tricky, but it's not impossible. I simply wetten the entire area and I work section by section. 
The waterline always needs to go out way further than the area that I intend to paint. If you need to go back into an area that you previously painted, just wait for it to be completely dry because you will most likely disturb the drying pigment and that will cause unintentional blooms and you will not be in full control over where your blooms are. I'm using the little trick with the gap that I told you about earlier to intensify the colors towards the pencil line. I'm using the intense pigment towards the edges and let it bleed towards the center. Next, I will dry off the brush and use it to soak up some of the pigment in the center. I will use it like a sponge. Alternatively, I can drop in some water and have the water push the pigment towards the sides for me. In order to make the siren stand out, I use a light wash of lemon yellow and then drop in some water. This will utilize the white paper to brighten it. In order to create this shiny neon effect, I mixed some lemon yellow into the cadmium yellow. I also used the white paper to make it appear even more shiny. By leaving some white spaces there, it appears even lighter and even shinier. And the yellow pops even more because of the really dark gray blackish color that I put next to it. I pre-mixed a larger amount of this so that I can work faster and ensure that my color is an even mix all throughout the painting. Because of that, it dries on my palette. So it's really easy to fill my brush with an intense mix of that watercolor. I can simply use a wet brush to activate some of that dry paint. Some watercolors will dry uneven, like as an uneven mix. Some of the pigments are heavier and will sink to the bottom. So you will not always have a consistent mix on your brush when you reactivate it. This can look really cool, but just be aware of it. Making the body of the car look interesting, but matching to the overall vehicle is easy. I'm using the same yellow mix that was used for the rest of the dump truck, but I will be dropping in a lot more water and intense drops of pigments. This will create beautiful blooms. In addition, I will make sure that the yellow color is more intense towards the edges, in the places where the body of the car would be round. This will create greater color variations and simply add a lot more interest and character to the design. Adding water drops to the drying pigment will create a variety of blooms. They can have different colors and sizes depending on the stages of the drying process that they were added to and depending on the amount of water added. Here, I want them to be different. Each bloom is unique anyways, but I can intensify the uniqueness with this knowledge. Now I'm facing a common problem. The yellow just looks flat. So let's add some shadows. I mixed some burnt umber in the yellow and I'm using that to paint in some shadows. I apply the brownish color to the page and then I'm using a wet brush to fuss out the edges. I can always add more pigment as long as it's still wet. Some of the brown pigment will simply bleed into the freshly wettened area. If it's not wet enough, I will simply let it dry completely and use the same method again in order to intensify the colors. This is not a detailed painting, so I use the shadows purely to make it look more interesting and give it some definition. If you're having trouble placing your shadows, try to look for the brightest areas instead and place the shadows to highlight the brightest areas. They will look brighter with a darker color near them. If a shadow is in the wrong spot, I don't really care about it as long as it looks good. Well, but sometimes it just doesn't look good. 
So I will let it dry completely and then soften up the pigment with a damp brush and try to soak up some of the pigment with a paper towel. While adding shadows, you can see your painting come to life. It starts to pop off the page. If you are unsure, just start with a lighter shadow and you can always add a second layer to darken it once it's dry. Remember, this is not a realistic painting. It's more about looking interesting and it's a nursery painting, so it doesn't need to be perfect. I think especially the imperfections make it look so much better. Just have fun painting. I really did not like how this looked, so I used a damp brush and I softened up the pigment, soaked it up with a paper towel. Some of the pigment stayed on the page, but to be honest, that's fine. So after letting it dry completely, I just added some yellow to it and distributed the yellow. Blending the new pigment in with a wet brush is important here, so you cannot see any of the brush strokes. I also use this opportunity to intensify the yellow in some of the other areas. Using two brushes here will speed up the painting process. It saves you time because you do not need to wash out your brush. So I use one brush to apply the watercolor with and then I use a second brush that I apply the water with. In order to create a greater contrast, I'm also adding some more of the brown pigment to some of the shaded areas. Right now is the perfect time to darken some of those shadows. Just don't scrub with your brush too much on the previous layer of pigment as you can lift them. Watercolor always looks lighter once it's dry, so it's perfectly normal that it looks different from when you first painted it. Let's work on some of the details. For me it was important that the lights do not stick out like a sore thumb. So I added a light wash of yellow and I simply added some of the darker pigment around the edges to define the shading. I wanted to make it look more interesting. So I dotted in some of the pigment into the headlights and just let it bleed. If the pigment is still too wet, it will just bleed too much and spread out all throughout the wet area. Even though the siren looks different, all three lights should match. So let's add some more details. The pencil lines are only a guideline for me to paint in the railing. I do not want these lines to be perfectly straight. It's okay, it's a kid's painting. But some details are important to make this painting part of the set. The spikes on the wheels are important and so is the light on top of the car or vehicle. That is also why I used the same color for the windows. Each painting will look unique, but they all match. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon with the next video.